Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet the Everyman scarf. This is a pretty and luxurious scarf that has an interesting kind of ribbed texture created by utilizing double crochet and back post double crochet stitches. For this project, you'll need a six and a half millimeter K crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Lion Brand's Wool Ease Chunky in this kind of charcoal colorway, and also Lion Brand's Wool Spun in the Rust colorway. However, you can use any yarn that recommends a K crochet hook on its label. Try using the Wool Ease Chunky, the Wool Spun, or uh, even Red Heart with Love is a good option for this scarf. But really, you can use any yarn that calls for a K crochet hook on its yarn label. So let's get started. This scarf is crocheted lengthwise. So when you make your starting chain, you're just gonna make your starting chain as long as you would like your scarf to be. And the scarf, as shown, measures six inches wide, and I achieve this width by working 10 rows. However, you work as many rows as you like to achieve the desired width. And if you go to the Fiberflux blog where the written pattern is, and the link can be found below this video, you'll see some tips I've given for measuring your scarf for the perfect fit for you or whoever you're giving it to. What I like to do is measure from hip to hip. So if you start at the, the hip, go around to the back of the neck, and then back to the other hip, you can get a rough idea of how long the scarf should be. And just for if you want it to just hang or if you want to wrap it once around the neck. If you want to wrap it a few times around the neck, obviously you'll want to make your scarf longer. If we look closely at the scarf, because we're alternating double crochet stitches and back post double crochet stitches, the front side gives a look of almost like it's stitched together. And I did one row of each color. So I did gray, red, gray, red. But if we flip the scarf over to the back, you can see it a, has a little bit more of a flatter appearance and um, the red rows are a little bit wider on this side. We're going to begin with the gray yarn. In the written pattern on the Fiberflux blog, I refer to the colors as color A and color B. Color A in the scarf shown is this gray color color B is the red. So I'm going to I'm going to do the same thing. I'm using slightly different shades than I did for this scarf, but we're still going to stick to this kind of gray reddish sequence. Okay? So when you begin your scarf, like I mentioned before, the scarf is crocheted lengthwise. So you're going to make your starting chain the length that you want the finished scarf to be. This scarf here is 70 inches. So I made my my starting chain 70 inches long. I'm going to make a shorter kind of sampler size so you don't have to see me crochet 70 chains. I'm going to make mine just a little shorter. Obviously yours will be longer like this one. So we're going to begin by putting a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook, and bring up a loop. Then go ahead and tighten it on there. Okay, so you're going to begin by making your starting chain, again, as long as you would like your scarf to be. If you need to get out the tape measure, um, you know, feel free to do that. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. Okay, yarn around hook, bring it through the loop. So just do that until your starting chain is as long as you'd like your scarf to be. And if this is for you or for someone else, you can even put that starting chain around someone's neck or your own neck if this is for you, uh, just to get an idea of how long you'd like it to be. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a few chains here. We're gonna pretend this is as long as we want our scarf to be. So to begin, in the fourth chain from the hook, this loop here does not count. So one, two, three, and four we're going to work a double crochet. To work a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the chain, and bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, 
wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook. I'm going to get a little more yarn here. Then we're going to work a double crochet in each chain all the way across. And because this is a larger hook and bulkier yarn, this is a pretty fast moving project as well. So again, we're just working a double crochet in each chain all the way across our row here. Just like that. And if you've never worked post stitches like the back post double crochet, this is a great project for mastering that stitch. If you need to learn how to do that stitch in particular and want to practice beforehand, I also have a video on how to crochet the back post double crochet stitch as well as the double crochet stitch. So there are two videos for each of the stitches used in this video. So I've come to the end and I've just worked a double crochet in each stitch or each chain, excuse me, all the way across. So let's move on to row two. To work row two, we're going to grab our scissors and switch colors. Row two is worked in color B or the reddish, which I'll be using. So we're just gonna cut our yarn and fasten off. I am just gonna fasten it off and tie the new color right on. At this point, if you have a preferred method of joining yarn, please feel free to do that. There's lots of different ways to join a new color or a new yarn onto your project. I'm just gonna tie mine right on. So I'm gonna take this rust colored yarn and we can move our gray out of the way for a moment and insert your hook into the last stitch that you worked and bring the new yarn through just like that and then you can go ahead and tie that right on and whenever you're working striped projects you can weave the ends in as you go along and that'll save you a lot of work in the end I'm gonna leave my ends hanging down so I can also show you how to weave those in at the end, okay? So reach your hook back into that same stitch and bring up a loop of the new yarn, okay? Next, we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and turn our work, okay? To work a back post double crochet, this row will be all back post double crochet stitches. You're going to work it similarly to a regular double crochet, but where you insert your hook to begin is where it makes a difference. So wrap the yarn around the hook. We're gonna work a back post double crochet in each one of these stitches, okay? So wrap the yarn around the hook and then take your hook from the back. We're gonna go, so when you have a, a double crochet, you have a little stitch at the top and you have a post, okay? It kind of looks like a column. So come from behind, in between, and go over top of the post. See how my hook goes over top of the post? And then bring up a, a loop, or excuse me, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the post. See how I'm bringing it through the post, okay? Then you're just gonna finish the stitch as you normally would. And we're gonna do this a couple of times. So wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, okay? So you can see a little bit of red showing through. And that's what's gonna give you this kind of stitchy appearance of the front side of your scarf, okay? So let's do this stitch again. Wrap the yarn around your hook, and come from behind to the front. We're gonna go over top of that post. Wrap the yarn around the hook and travel it all the way through and bring up that loop, just like that. So you'll have three loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. 
we've now worked two back post double crochets. You can see just a hint of color showing. And as you continue along the row, these will loosen up and relax a little bit. Okay, so wrap yarn around the hook, bring it from the back over top of the post, yarn around the hook, bring that loop through, all the way through where you came from, yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay, so it almost creates even like a, a shelf or a rib here. Okay, and again, as we go along, these um, post stitches will kind of relax a little bit. Okay, so yarn around hook, come over top of that post, yarn around hook, bring the loop through the way you came, yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook. Okay, so we're just going to keep doing that all the way across our row. Get some more yarn. And this gray and red is such a pretty color combination and working one row of each color. I did a little bit of experimentation and working a row of double crochet in one color, a row of back post double crochet in another color really sets um, the stitches off the best. I did a couple combinations and that's what I found to look the best. But you can experiment a little bit on your own as well. So again, we're just working back post double crochets in each stitch all the way across. So we're coming up to the end of our row. Then you're just going to work to you find the very last post. Okay, now we've arrived, just get a little more yarn. We've arrived at our turning chain. So in this third chain up, if you look, one, two, three, this third chain up, just work a regular double crochet to finish off that row. Okay, so let me get my hook out of the way so you can see. So it'll look kind of like that. Okay, so let's move on to row three. We're going to work row three by switching colors the same way we did before. So go ahead and cut the red. We can get this color out of the way and then fasten off. Okay, then we're gonna grab our gray yarn again and we're going to do the same thing, just tie it right on. Again, if you have a preferred method, feel free to do that. So just insert your hook into the last stitch worked, bring the new yarn through, and just tie it right on. This is my favorite method for joining yarn. I know other people have other favorite methods, but this is the way I like to do it. Okay, so we have our new yarn. Um, insert the hook back into that stitch and bring up a loop, okay? So what we're going to do for row three is chain three. One, two, three, and turn our work. Now, in each stitch across, we're going to work a double crochet. So before we were working into the posts, but now we're going to be working into the stitches, these tiny little loops at the top, okay? So we'll work a double crochet in the first stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, and you can already see what a big difference in the appearance of the front and the back of your scarf. So this side looks, the red shows uh, more heavily and the other side is just little subtle stitches of color. So the scarf is completely reversible and you can choose if you want to show more color or if you want to just show a little bit of color. Totally up to you. Okay, so we're just coming up to the end of the row here. 
and we've worked a double crochet in each stitch all the way across. So when you get to the end, you're going to locate your turning chain again in the third chain up. One, two, three. You'll see it. It's at the top here. You might need to wiggle a little to find it, but we're just going to work a double crochet into that turning chain. Okay, to finish off the row. So row three is complete. So it looks like this. And next, we can go ahead and fasten it off because we're going to be doing a, another color, or we will be doing another color if we were continuing. But this is the pattern repeat. This is what it's going to look like. So what you'll do to finish your scarf is repeat rows two and three until your scarf is the desired width. So this is the length of our scarf, and we're gonna work rows to get the width of our scarf. You'll want to end on row two, so work rows two and three, two and three, two and three, but end on row two, and that will give you a nice finished edge. And let me show you what I'm talking about. If you look at the finished scarf here, you can see I have ended on, this is where I ended. This was the last row I worked and I ended on row two. And that gives this really pretty, it looks like a chain running along the edge of the scarf. It gives a very nice finished edge. So you're just gonna work rows two and three until the scarf is the desired width. Now this scarf is shown um, is six inches wide and I worked 10 rows of the pattern to achieve this. So what um, you want to do, if you want it to be wider, just keep working more rows. If you want it to be narrower, work less rows. So when you're finished, your scarf, and it's as wide as you'd like it to be, and it's as long as you'd like it to be, you can go ahead and thread your tapestry needle. And go in one direction. and then go in the other direction. And you'll do the same for all of the ends. Now, I didn't weave my ends as I went along, um, but if you do that, you'll save yourself all the work at the end of weaving all these ends. So that is how you crochet the every man scarf. Here's our finished scarf. And thanks so much for watching. And be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.